Hi, I'm Carrie Cunningham. I'm the owner of Endless Designs by Carrie, where I create custom garments and teach sewing lessons. Today, we're going to talk about upcycling or refashioning, whichever term you prefer. Um, if you're like me, you might have jeans or capris in your closet, in your wardrobe, that no longer fit. So today, I'll show you how to refashion them into a skirt. So we will start by cutting the, the jeans open. I've done a little bit of that already. And um, I'm cutting on the inside of the flat fill seam so we don't have to pick threads out. We'll use that as part of the character of the skirt. And we'll cut, finish cutting up to the inseam, cut as straight as possible. And then we're gonna go up still on the inside of the flat fill seam, and we'll do about two or three inches from the bottom of the zipper. So let's get that part done. And you need really sharp scissors for this. So I think that's good. You'll know if you need to cut it more. And then we'll go to the other side and finish that cut. Again, inside that flat fill seam. So what you'll end up with is a front and a back separated. And here's the last little cut. And that's why you need a sharp scissors. They didn't want to go through there. So then you can decide if you want this seam to go this way or this way. But because we left the flat fill seam, we're going to leave it here. And again, add to that character. So when you lay it over, when you cross it over, you want this to be as flat as possible because you don't want to pucker in here. If you move it over, you see that pucker there? You don't want that. You want to keep this flat, lay it down. And because you got so much going on here, I don't use pins here. I will use um, double-sided tape to hold this in place. So again, it's nice and flat. And let's get the tape going. I'm going to use a little bit here, so I'll cut it to size. And sometimes the hardest part is getting it separated, but let's get this going. So I'll lay the tape here, a little curve there. We're just going to go to this point only now to start. And kind of burnish it with your nail or your scissors or whatever tool you may have. And that will allow you to pull the top away from the bottom. So there we go. And you can see the tape there. So now you lay this over again to hold that down. Actually, I put the tape in the wrong direction. Sorry, let's just move it. it should have gone on this side of the curve. And now we can place it. And there it goes. So that's down. And then we'll do the same thing with another little piece here to hold this part down. So kind of pre-measure it, see how much I need. And it's okay if you go a little over or a little under. Just work with what you have. And we'll do the same thing here. Place it. Burnish it and remove the cover. And again, this is sometimes the hardest part, but there it goes. We did it. Okay, so what you end up here with is a split. And you can see it's going to be pretty high. And that's, what, that's the part we're going to talk about in just a little bit, what to, how to take care of that. So now we'll take this over to the machine, and I'll show you how to do it. OK, so take your time and get it on the machine. And I'll talk about um, the settings and the thread. So the needle I'm using is a denim needle. And you can use any um, heavyweight needle that you have. But I prefer denim needle. And the stitch that I'm going to use is a zigzag stitch because I want a little bit of decoration here. You can use a straight stitch of the same color, but you want um, 
you want to make sure um, that you use the same color or use the contrasting color. I'm using the contrasting color because I have this cute little sewing machine on my, on my pants. Before I cut them, they were pants. And my settings for the zigzag stitch is, on this machine, it's a number five. It's 3.5 in width, and it's 1.4 in length. And then we'll just start. I'll do a little back stitch at the beginning. And I'll just sew that curve. <clears throat> and when you sew on the curve, it's all about your hands, which way you move your hands. So just let your hands make that curve for you. And even if you did a straight stitch on this part, you would still have to make this curve. And don't let that end get away from you because you don't want that pucker. And I'll just go to the end. And I have a lot of bulk here, so that denim needle really helps with that. I'm gonna let my needle down and do a pivot. So the cool thing about this foot is that it has a, um, a little black button here, right there. When you get to, and this is not just on denim, this is on anything. When you get to bulk, you can push that button in and it will go right over it. And then it will level itself out. You don't have to worry about pushing the button a second time. Let's keep everything flat. And then we'll just go to the end. Because again, you've got your double-sided tape holding that in place for you. When you get to the end, we're going to back stitch. Lock that stitch in. You don't want a little bit, you don't want a big back stitch if you have a contrasting color, because then you'll see it. So just a little bit there. And I could have used my thread cutter, but I forgot. If you have one, take advantage of it. And we're going to put our lace in. Now this doesn't have to be lace. This could be any fabric that you choose. And this one happens to be a finished bottom with the scallop edge. It doesn't have to be that. You can use um, any lace or any fabric and any finish on the end. Uh, but if you do have a raw bottom, raw edge bottom, you do need to hem it. So there's our lace. And then we would do the same thing here with the double-sided tape. And what I did is I've kind of spread this out so that it all kind of matches up. Move it over just a little bit. There we go. And we use our double-sided tape. And to secure this together, I'll just do a quick measurement here. And see how much I need. You don't need a lot. Uh, but you do want to secure everything. And let's cut this other side while we're at it. So now you get a really good idea of the placement with everything on top here. But let's um, go ahead and attach it. Just like we did at the top here. We'll do the same thing here. We'll attach it, give it a burnish, and peel it off. Same thing here. I like to lay this back down to make sure it stays in place. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. And right, let's see if we can get this one going. Yep, there we go. So let me take a look at my scallop again and make sure it's all evenly placed. This one is a little bit low. I'm gonna pull it up just a little bit. And there we go. So now we're gonna take this back to the machine. And again, you can either straight stitch or zigzag, but I'm gonna zigzag more. 
and start right where you left off at. Don't forget a little back stitch. I'm trying to get some speed here. There we go. This is how we really saw, right? <laughs> Okay, so this is how you do this side and you would do the other side the same way. Let me take it to the table so you can see it. So there's the one side and then you would do the other side exactly the same way. And you would also do the same thing on the back. So here's my sample of the back. It's already done, it's all surged. You don't have to surge if you don't want to. Um, just decide what you want to do. And here I did a zigzag only to this point to show you what you could do if you did not have a zipper here. If you had an elastic waist pants, you could do that. Okay, so we're gonna go over to the mannequin and take a look at uh, what we have here. So here I have a skirt that I did not use lace. I used a print. And here I had a skirt that I didn't need anything because the split came out so small. You won't know what size your split is until you do this wrap over. And here on here, I did a high-low. So what I did was I cut the whole thing longer than I wanted it, and then I cut the front to a different length and left it there. But the process is the same as this one. And that's how you can recycle your capris or your jeans.